Okay, so today we're going to talk about the axial skeleton, and in particular the skull and facial bones. Remember, the axial skeleton is comprised of the skull, thoracic cage, and the vertebral column. But today we're just going over the skull and some of the features. So the skull is the most complex bony structure in the body and consists of the cranial bones, or cranium, which enclose and protect the brain as well as provide some attachment sites for some head and neck muscles. The facial bones form the framework of the face, form cavity for your eyes and nose, and provide openings for passage of air and food, and hold the teeth and anchor the muscles of the face. So the skull bones are flat bones which are firmly attached by interlocking immovable joints called sutures, which we'll discuss in a little bit. So to start with the cranial bones, these are eight large flat bones fused together to form the brain bucket. The superior aspect is curved kind of like an eggshell, and this self-bracing engineering makes it very strong for its weight. So you're going to want to be able to recognize all the bones from different views, and eventually without the conveniently colored markings here. So the lateral, the frontal, the inferior view, as well as the inside view of the skull are all going to be necessary to recognize. So here's a mnemonic to help you remember the cranial bones, occipital, parietal, frontal, temporal, ethmoid, and sphenoid. And the mnemonic for your facial bones, your vomer, your inferior nasal conchi, your nasal bones, your mandible, your maxilla, your palatine, your zygomatic, and your lacrimal can be remembered by this mnemonic, Virgil can not make my pet zebra laugh. And if you could think of a better one, please tell me. So once you learn the names of all these cranial and facial bones, you're going to start working all the features of these bones. So one of the features you're going to have to recognize is the sutures, that is the connections between these cranial flat bones and facial bones. So here I'm going to introduce the concept of articulations or joints. Any times two bones join together, this is a joint, otherwise known as an articulation. I'll discuss each type of joint as we come across specific examples of each. So right here we're going to talk about these sutures, which is one of the three structural joints falling under the category of fibrous joints. In these sutures, the edges of the joining bones are wavy and interlocking and connected by short interconnecting collagen fibers. These knit the bones together and also allow growth so that the skull can expand with the brain during childhood. This is one of the main differences between adult and infant skulls, particularly before the age of five. These connections are much more flexible and there are large fibrous regions between the cranial bones known as fontanelles. And once your brain stops growing, the fibrous tissue ossifies, that is, it kind of turns the bone and the skull bones fuse together to work as a single unit. So many of the structures or features of the skull will be comprised of two or more cranial and facial bones. And this is where you want to start paying attention to names. For instance, the roof of your mouth, the heart palate, is made up of two bones, the maxilla and the palatine bone. The region of the maxilla that connects to the palatine bone is the palatine process, which connects to the horizontal plate, the inferior region of the palatine bone. And another example is the feature of the zygomatic arch, made up of the zygomatic bone and your temporal bone. The zygomatic process of the temporal bone connects to the temporal process of the zygomatic bone to make up this structure. So there's going to be these and other types of features involved in these kind of articulations as well as others, and also areas and features involved in muscle and ligament attachment on the surface of your skull bones. There's also these large openings for your eyes, your nose, your mouth, and your ears, as shown here, as well as the smaller openings and passageways with blood vessels and nerves are going to pass through. For these, you're going to want to recognize them externally and then from an internal view of the skull as well. So for all these canals, foramens, fissures that there are in skulls, there's a certain amount of which you're going to have to recognize. And the trick is to go from anterior to posterior and be able to label all the holes that you're required to know. So make yourself a mnemonic and learn them in relationship to each other. That is the easiest way for you to remember. And of course, they are easier to learn with the color-coded models when you're beginning. However, eventually you're going to want to look and be able to identify not only all the bones, but all the features and the passageways, etc., in a more natural, unlabeled black and white skull. 
So it's important to recognize the major features in relationship to each other, and then all the minor features in relationship to these major features and to each other. All right, we'll see you next time.